Straight. Hello, everybody. Tommy John rubbing elbows with me. I thought they said Michael Jordan, but Kevin Jordan. And he grew up in New York and he went out to LA and became a policeman. And now he does stand up comedy, which is what I did all those years on the mound at Yankee State. You grew up in Queens, right? Yeah, I grew up in Queens. I went to uh, uh, St. John. Went there while, uh, what was his name? Viola was there. Oh, okay. Um, he had or he had just left when I got there. So, okay. but, uh, yeah, I grew up in Queens. I was a big I was a big Mets fan for a long time uh, until uh, the, one of the Mets broke my heart, and then I started go I just go out to the Bronx and follow the Yankees. You can see my whole office is painted like Yankee Stadium. <laughs> so I figured, listen, they're never gonna call me up. I think those days are gone. So, <laughs> This is my way of walking around inside Yankee Stadium. So that's, that's about as close as I'm going to get now. So when you were growing up, you were a Met fan. Who were some of your favorite Met players? Oh, Tommy Agee. Uh, of course, Tom Seaver, Bud Harrelson, you know, uh, Cleon Jones. So, uh, yeah, that whole 60, 69 Met team. Tommy Agee and I signed together at Cleveland. Oh, really? And we to the minor leagues together and went to the big leagues. Then we were both traded over to the White Sox together. And he is absolutely one of the nicest, kindest people that ever played baseball. Center racing hard as AG. What a grab! Tom AG saves two runs. Tommy AG going all the way to the track, looking to backhand stab with a glove, and now he'll have to break himself with the bare hand on the wall. A lot of white showing. Look at that ball. Boy, he just had that one, Lindsay. The count is 0-2. There's a fly ball, it'll be tough to get to. AG is going, and AG makes a diving catch. He's out. Now, this man has possibly saved five runs in this game. Watch it in slow motion. The wind is blowing out. Now, AG twice has clutched this ball in the webbing of his glove. Once against Hendricks with two on and two out, this time with a base is loaded and two out. Oh, that's good to hear. You know, it, you know, it's such a shame when you when you meet your heroes and they it just don't turn out the way you expect it to, you know. So, um, and, and, and that's the story right there. Like um, uh, Shea Stadium didn't have player parking back in the day when I was a kid. Players oh, okay. could park out in front of the stadium. So me and my boys, we get on the, you know, for, look for a dollar twenty five, you can get in the stadium, and uh, so we would get there early. And we try to be the first in line, and for for three dollars you can sit right on the rail. Oh my goodness! They put it in your press box, and you put it put you right on the rail at, at Shea Stadium. So this one year, we you know we get there early, and we're playing catch out in front of the get out in front of the stadium, and a baby blue El Dorado is coming right at me. The license oh. plates say "Say Hey." It's Willie Mays. The history of the game. There's a drive to left. It's well hit. Going back and gone. <laughs> Willie Mays with his first home run of the year and his first as a New York Met, a high fastball. He lines it over the left field fence. Oh, my goodness. So he parks right in front of me. There's nobody around. Nobody sees him yet. He steps out of his car. I hand him a baseball. I say, Mr. Mays, uh, would you sign my baseball? 
and really, really to this day, the rudest thing he's ever, he goes, I don't sign baseballs and flipped it back at me and walked in the stadium. Oh, I was crushed. I was crushed. And after wow. that, I was, uh, I went over, I sort of just started going to the Bronx and seeing my boys, Horace Clark and Roy White and uh, G. Michael and all the boys out there. But, you know, maybe you caught him on a bad day. I know. He must have went 0 for 3 or 3 strikeouts the day before or something. But, uh, yeah, I, I was, he was, I was trying, so upset. He was trying to get some nookie from a girl. <laughs> and, <laughs> I, I mean, uh, it's, it's baseball. Oh, uh, Lord. Listen, I don't, I don't know. I listen, I don't, they don't put that on the backside of the post of the Daily News. So <laughs> They don't? You've got people on the inside to get that one. Yeah, um, yeah, that's right. I guess all I know is Derek Jeter used to give away. I, I hope it's, you know what? I hope it's true that Derek Jeter was giving away gift baskets to women that he slept with. I hope it's true, boy. I hope some of the women kept them gift baskets. That's such a nice thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you better have a lot of money if you slept around. Oh, Lord have mercy. One, two. He loops that to left field. Going to be a tough play. Jeter on the run. Makes the play. Wow. And flies into the stands. Oh, what a play by Derek Jeter. Ooh. Wow. Wow. Jeter really yeah, banged I himself he, up. Wow. I think he caught the, you could see the redness in his face. He oh, caught yeah. the fire of that uh, box. What a play. Oh, my wow. goodness. He caught the, he had to know that was going to happen. I mean, it's just full tilt. There's no way you could stop. He had to hit one of the chairs. Yeah, on his way had down. To be one he... of the chairs' uh, handles or something like that. No way he could stop it. Nah. Wow. That's just all out. Pure hustle, pure guts. I got to make the play. Nothing else matters. Oh, my goodness. Ooh. Let's take a look at it in real speed. That's funny. Yeah. Listen, I'm still a Yankee fan. You know what? I've, I've kind of let go of the... I, 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 I still got Mets in my heart, but like I said, I was a big Yankee fan after that. I love Derek Jeter. And when the core four came in, you know, uh, uh, Posada and the other two... Uh, Mariano, I was just, I, just, I was just in love with the Yankees because the Yankees. When I was a kid, the Yankees were was still owned by CBS, um, right. right? You know, uh, so they weren't that good. You know, they, they didn't even care. They had that. I remember when I was a kid, they had that wife swapping uh, ordeal over at the Yankees. Oh, with Fritz Peterson and Mike Kekic. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So well, the thing about that is uh, Peterson and Mike Kekic's wife are still t together. Wow, yeah, yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, right. One of them didn't go back, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I just moved here, and this is before the internet. You couldn't just find things before you went. So um, I went to a job fair, and the police department was there, and they had a uh, picture of a TV studio. And so the guy said, yeah, we have our own TV studio. We make our own films. I go, really? So he said, yeah. So I sign up. And I go through all the testing, and the day that the day I signed up for the fi the police department, a fireman came by. He goes, "Hey, if you're gonna sign their work, sign mine too." So I signed his, and I tried. I was going through all the testing for police and fire, police and fire. Well, the police department called. They called in April, and uh, I was halfway through the academy. And about June, the fire department called. He says, "Hey, we're starting a class. Are you interested?" I go, "No, not really." And there was a pause on the phone. He goes, you don't want to be a fireman? I go, well, I'm in the police academy now, and I'm halfway finished. And he, got, he says to me over the phone, he says, listen, you go ask your instructor what you should do, whether you should be a fireman or a policeman. I said, oh, OK. Now, I didn't, I didn't ask my instructor, and I didn't understand what he was trying to tell me. I know now he's right. Everybody wants to be a fireman. Everybody loves a fireman. They only work what six days a month, eight days a month. Oh, I would have loved that. I think I think if I had been the fire on the fire department, I would have never gotten into comedy. But you know, as, as the way things happen, uh, I, I stayed a police officer and uh, I wound up in the comedy field.
I had I had uh, I had stumbled into comedy while I was still on the while I was still working West LA, and there used to be a com a uh, uh, like a uh, comedy club at the Playboy Club. Remember the old Playboy clubs? Yep. Back in the sure. day. Well, there was one there was one in my patrol area, so I used to go hang out over there. So one day I'm doing my comedy show. I do it, and I'm running out because I'm running late for work. I have to be a roll call. And I figured it wasn't that far, so it wasn't that big a deal. But I'm speeding, and I get pulled over. And, you know, it's guys I know because they're from my division. They go, what, what is your hurry? I go, I got to get the roll call. I'm late. I was doing a show at the Playboy Club, and I'm late for roll call. Well, that story winds up climbing the chain of command at the station. <laughs> <laughs> I get a call into the lieutenant's office. He says to me, he goes, uh, uh, do you have a second job? I go, no, no, no. He goes, well, what's this about you uh, doing shows at the Playboy Club? And I was excited about it. So I go, yeah, yeah, I'm doing, you know, I'm doing stand-up comedy, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, that's a second job. I go, no, no, because I'm not getting paid. I'm not making any money. So it's just kind of a hobby. So he goes, he says, um, well, what if one day you pull somebody over and they saw your show? So I go, well, if they like my show, I'm just going to let them go. But if they didn't like them, I write them a ticket. I thought it was funny. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't see the humor in it. I thought it was funny. Yeah, he he didn't see the humor in it. So he he told me. Uh, he said, "I can't tell you not to do comedy, but I can highly suggest to you that you shouldn't." I said, "Okay." So that just to me meant I got to be a little more secretive about how I do it. I can't do it in West LA anymore, and I can't tell anybody I'm going to do it. So I was sneaking around, I was in Pasadena and I was in downtown LA. I would do it and still doing comedy. So later that year, about Christmas time, the Lieutenant comes up to me, goes, hey, Jordan, you still doing that comedy thing? And I go, no, no, no. He goes, yeah, because we could use you for the, for the Christmas show. I go, the Christmas show? He goes, yeah, he said, yeah, it might be funny if you told some jokes during the Christmas show. So I go, okay, maybe this is my chance to show them so they can see what I do. And they'll be okay with it. So I said, yeah. I said, okay, Lieutenant, I'll put something together. So I go do the Christmas show. Now, the Christmas show in West L.A. is a big deal. The mayor shows up. The, uh, the chief of police shows up. A lot of stars show up. Um, Tim Conway was there. He did a little something. All right, here. Okay, now, let's see. I'm going to pull your truth out. Uh, P. 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 U. P-U-L-L, full tooth, T, T, T-O-T-O-T-H, we are, pull your tooth out. Boy, this is gonna hurt. Doctor, if it's gonna hurt, please give me something to kill the pain. Yeah, okay, well, got some Novocaine right here. Just, uh, hold on that, man, let's see how this works here. Okay, Novocaine. Here we are, Novocaine. Take a firm hold of the hypodermic needle. Right. <laughs> ah. oh. There will be a little bit of pain, and then numbness will set in. So I go up, I tell my, tell my 20 minutes of jokes, blah, blah, blah. And they're all inside jokes, you know, cause I'm on the department, I'm telling jokes I know they got, and the place is going crazy. They love it. Yeah, I never joined the military. I joined the police department. I was a Los Angeles police officer. That's what I was. That's what I was. You know what's amazing? As soon as I quit being a police officer, they had the Rodney King scandal. 
OJ scandal, Chief Darrell Gates scandal, Rampart Division scandal, and the gang division scandal. All that happened after I quit. Who knew I was the glue hole that whole department together? <laughs> and being a cop, just like being in the military. Academies like boot camp, get up every morning singing those running songs. Up in the morning with the rising sun. Run all day till the run and done. I hated that. <laughs> We're policemen. We should have been singing songs like, running around this gymnasium floor. We're out of donuts, gonna get some more. <laughs> Everybody, uh, Chief Gates' wife comes up to me. She said, oh, you're so funny. Oh, you're going to have a second career after you, be, after you finish on the police department. And I'll say, oh, man, this is great. Even the chief likes it. About three or four days later, I'm out on patrol. I get a call. Hey, Jordan, come back to the station. You got a phone call. I go, oh, my God, what's this all about? I get to the station. It's second, second in command, Commander Wyndham. And I thought he's calling and say, hey, great job the other night, blah, blah, blah. He calls me up and reads me the riot act. He goes, you know, that was the worst show we've ever seen. And if you don't like being on this department, you turn in that badge right now and blah, blah, blah. I say, oh my God, oh my God, what have I done? <laughs> so, so, so yeah, so the chief, so now the chief, the police, the chief and the deputy chief hate my show. Right? So, okay. Couple of months later, I get a call. I, I'm, at the, I'm at the station. My, my uh, sergeant says to me, hey, don't come in tomorrow. You're on loan to Hollywood Division. I go, what for? He says, they're having a barbecue and they want you to come and do a comedy show. I go, for real? He goes, yeah. So you'll be on loan to Hollywood Division for the next two days. So, you know, it cracked me up. Every time I do a show, they hate it, but they keep asking me to do a show. but they don't want you to make them laugh and make them look bad. I guess, I guess that's what it was. I guess that's what it was, you know? And I wasn't saying, well, it's what I was telling Joe where if you were in the rank and file, you liked it. But if you were a, one of the superior officers, you know, if you're a supervisor, you probably, yeah. You probably, yeah, you know, they didn't like it, so. A police officer? Yeah, look at you don't like the light in your eyes. See what it feels like, you see that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, all them people weren't drunk, they were blind. See how it happens? Why, why wouldn't they like it? I mean, a joke's a joke. It's, it's not like... Right, that's what I say. I would shake my head and go on about my business. Where do you get your material? Do you write it or do you get somebody to give you some props or what? I, I, it baffles me. Thing, things just come to me. A joke I tell now. Um, uh, this is true. Uh, my wife is a retired homicide detective. Oh, good. Okay. All right. And I tell, I tell this joke. I go, you know what? I really don't think she wanted to retire because every time I wake up in the morning, there's a chalk outline around my body. <laughs> so, you never know. You never know when a joke hits you. Well, that's um, somebody, I, I'm big into country music. Uh -huh. And they, and, um, they got, something just hit them. And right. they jumped out of bed and wrote it down. And the next day, then they put it to music and it was a hit song. Yeah, isn't that something? And, and, and I, I, I would imagine that the jokes would be doing the same thing. Yeah, you know, it basically, you know, or sometimes somebody will say something to you or something will happen where, you know, the, that, the joke comes out. Uh, another joke, because I'm, I'm only 5'4", and I used to tell a joke that I go, um, I, and I had a partner who was five feet, you know, was, <laughs> she was only five feet and I'm 5'4", and I used to say, we get out of the car, we look like the munchkins from The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> 
I worked patrol, the backbone of the department. Matter of fact, I had a female partner when I worked patrol. I had a female partner, 5'1", 110 pounds, that's it. And I'm only 5'4", 140. We got out of the car, we looked like the munchkins from the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> I used to walk up to the side of a car. We represent the alley, dee, dee, the alley, dee, dee, the alley, dee, dee. Get back in the car and drive away. Uh. We, um, when I was with the Dodgers, Lasorda's first year, uh, we won the pennant and, um, the first game I'm, I pitch in the playoffs. Well, we go like 11 innings or something like that. And we lose, we, we didn't play real well. And, um, next day, Lasorda comes in. He is furious. And he's dead. He said, I, I had to go out and get a sports psychologist for you guys. Oh, oh we go, Oh God, this is going to be, so the door opens and in walks Don Rickles. Okay, fellas. The problem with this team is we've been too serious. Now we're gonna have to do something different. So I decided to get this club loose. I'm gonna hire an entertainment coach. And the fellow that I've hired is gonna make you guys relax. Here's our new entertainment coach, Don Rickles. <laughs> it's all in a jog. Uh, Tubbs, would you get down the end? <laughs> Amigo, <laughs> which means I definitely feel, Pedro, you should go back to your homeland and become a general. Now, Pedro, I know you a lot of years, and I watched you play. You're a great ball player. Problem is, the wife don't buy it. Now, I met the wife. You got a lot of money, but how long are you gonna make the woman clean hotel rooms? <laughs> you gotta let her get out in the ballpark. You gotta live and enjoy a little bit. You know what I mean, Pedro? You're a good amigo. How old are you now? 29. 29. He's 29. in this country 38 years, he's still talking Spanish. <laughs> I want you to know 29. something. Huh? I'm 29. 29? Good, 29. <laughs> you just won the lottery. You won two weeks in Acapulco. <laughs> <laughs> but you're a good man, and have another great year. Finish the season. <laughs> Isn't this fun, eh? <laughs> Wait to see the money we pay you. <laughs> now, Bill, this is Bill Russell, one of the great, the dean of baseball. You're 38 now, right, Bill? Right. That's right. The only ball player in the locker room gets oiled. <laughs> I gotta tell you, Bill, you come from Oxbow or someplace like that in Oklahoma, just well. sit around watching crickets die. So this guy, Bill Russell, one of the great ball players, 38 years old, spitting up as he goes for a grounder. <laughs> it's all over, Bill. Go back to Oxbow and... Play around with a farmhouse. Thanks, Don. I needed that. All right, good. I'll do the funny stuff. Make another remark like that, and you're going to wind up in a Dominion Republic in front of a wall. Oh, hello, Bill. How are you? <laughs> Friendly colored guy. But I want you to know this. Col colored guy means great man. Okay, thank anyway, you. Anyway, never mind. Touch me. Now I'll get sick. I'll tell you this, though, Bill. You're a marvelous, marvelous ball player. You got out of Pittsburgh just in time. Thank you. Because the steel workers were starting to grin at you. <laughs> You're a wonderful ball player. You play third base terrific. Dave Anderson, the wonderful filling guy, keeps sitting up in the stands with a rifle trying to pick you off. <laughs> so I don't think you're going to finish the season, Bill, but I want to wish you a lot of luck. You and Bill Russell can hang up at the actor's home and just sit on the porch going, we were big ones. We were big ones. <laughs> right next to you. <laughs> Again, you touch me. <laughs> it's murder. He thinks he's on a train and he's going to make up my bunk. Anyway, you're a great guy. <laughs> This is Steve Sachs. Uh, as you all know, Steve has a problem. <laughs> He's been smiling at a lot of guys in the locker room. <laughs> anyway, Steve, we know your problems, but you're a wonderful youngster. He's the only guy when I first met him said, want to see my bubble gum? <laughs> anyway, uh, Bill, uh, Steve, uh, I didn't even, I forgot yeah. your name already. Steve, oh, I, Steve. I, I, shut up, I'll tell you what I want. <laughs> Still locked yourself in the bathroom with the radio on loud? <laughs> He's a marvelous kid. <laughs> Sits around in the dugout playing with his jock on. <laughs> He's a great kid. I wish you another big year. Finish Thank the you. season, and you're going to be back in San Antonio where you belong. <laughs> Just sitting around watching ducks die. God bless. You're okay. Tom, I'm a friend. Keep this up. You should get a massive one by Friday. <laughs> <Aunt Tom. laughs> I've seen a lot of Italians, but this is the best. This man gets up in the morning, his wife puts a cord on his ass and makes him a blimp. <laughs> I want you to know this, Tom. You're a great manager, and he's my dear friend. 
He teaches these guys every day where America is. And I want you to know this, Tom. You're making a ton of money. And I like your life. Oh. 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 He opened his mouth. He goes for a half an hour, 40 minutes. And jokes telling, you couldn't tell him in Vegas even. That's how bad. Oh, my. Oh, my. They were they were horrible. I mean, oh my goodness. horrible. But he was going on and guys were laughing. So we get done and I'm sitting there going, oh, OK, all right. Uh, we've laughed. We forgot about the bad game yesterday. We right. go out. That was Lasorda. He wasn't he wasn't a genius, but he knew how to make guys win. Right. OK. Well, we're back here at Veteran Stadium, and in between innings, Tommy, he's out there as a Philly fanatic, as a stuffed mannequin of a Dodger, and Tommy trying to get that fanatic close. You see the physique of the <laughs> of the mannequin. Tommy's a little bit hot, I think, as he's going to move that over and now. Look at him go. Now he. <laughs> He says, you don't make fun of me or my ball club. <laughs> I've seen all your numbers. Your numbers are comparable to anybody in the Hall of Fame. Well, I got uh, this last time um, Jim Cott was voted in. And the next day, I get a phone call about 9 o'clock in the morning. TJ, yeah, Kitty. I said, yeah. He said, I just want to apologize. For what? He said, you should be in the Hall of Fame. I shouldn't. Mm. He said, I just want to let you know. I apologize. I'm taking your spot. I said, Kitty, don't worry about it. My, my dad told me when I left Terre Haute, my dad said, don't worry about things you have no control over. Right, man. Yeah. Yeah. You worry about pitching because you can control that. Right. But you can't worry about them because you can't control them. Right. Marvin uh, Miller is in the Hall of Fame. Okay, now. what's, the, what's uh, uh, Kirk Flood, right? Oh, Kirk Flood, yes. Yeah. Okay, right. yeah. You know, for those, because all those things, you know what, because if, if there's a Mount Rushmore, you should be there, he should be there, Marvin Miller should be there, because the game, today's game, I mean, like they say, they say um, you need one tendon to get to the majors and another tendon to have a career in the majors. Right, and that's but, that's because of you. Yeah, but um, we're um, Lasorda's taken over the team, and all of a sudden, Sinatra starts coming to the ballpark, and um, all these actors start coming to the ballpark. Right, Ripples comes to the ballpark, so I'm sitting on the bench, you know, like you do, sitting there, uh -huh. and the kid comes down. And he said, "Tommy, yeah." You got to go up to Lasorda's office. And I look down like this, and Lasorda's down at the end of the bench. <laughs> so I get up, I walk upstairs to his office, and it, the door's locked. I knock on the door, and the door opens, and here in his Dodger blue sleeve sweatshirt and his tidy whiteies is Don Rickles. He said, Come in shut the door and lock it. And I said, Rickles, I'm not that kind of a guy. He said, get in here, you effing putts. Get in here. I need you. I have what? He said, I'm going to be ball boy. And you're the only guy on the team I could trust <laughs> to dress me. Oh, that's funny. So I said, okay. I said, the big thing that guys will look for is you miss a belt loop. Uh -huh. He said, okay. So, he he goes and he gets dressed and I look at him like this, you know. You look good to me. And he pats me on the butt and he said, I owe you. Okay. <laughs> well, then when Lasorda brought him in to be the sports psychologist, uh -huh. Dodger locker room was laid out A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And they did it that way so the players couldn't get together and farm clicked. Oh, okay. He said some things that 
to this day and age, you couldn't say them. That's how bad they are. So he gets done and he gets down Dusty Baker, this guy, this guy, Bert Hooten, Charlie Huff, Tommy John. Tommy John. Debt's paid. <laughs> and the guys go, what was that all about? I said, ah, something I did for him. <laughs> but but we, he was, Rickles was so friggin' funny. I, I loved him. And, you know, yeah. he one of the nicest men I've ever, ever been around for just being nice. Right. You know, yeah. I met Rickles at the Orleans one night. We went backstage and nice enough to meet him. But I like, he, just, he looked like a, a shriveled up old man sitting there. He had his robe on. He's talking for a little while. He gets on stage. It's a whole new person. It's a whole new person. Like, yeah. Oh my God. He's running around. He's jumping. He's talking. I was like, wow, that's, uh, that was amazing. But yeah, he was, he was one of a kind. You couldn't have a Rickles today. You could not have a Rickles today. It would be hard to write your own jokes. Right, yeah. You got any good good ones out there that you want to get across to us? A joke joke or like a, a, a story or something? Yeah. I'm fighting off a cold, man. In other words, I'm fighting off a cold. As a matter of fact, I almost, I almost didn't show up. I was going to cancel. I was going to just, I was going to call in sick on this show. That's what you do when you don't want to go to work, right? Call in sick. Everybody calls in sick at their job. No one ever believes you when you do it. <laughs> Always got to use your very best call in sick voice. When I used to work in an office, my very best call in sick voice was, was Elmer Fudd. Oh. <laughs> I'm not feeling very well today. <laughs> I'll be in the Mawo. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then when you do get sick, what do you do? You go to work. It's like, man, I feel like crap. But no sense wasting a sick day. If you ever get down here to Sarasota, Florida, look me up. If I get out to California. Let me ask you, let me ask you a question. Do, do, do you ever go to the Yankee um, all, um, uh, old-timers games? I don't get invited. Really? No. Wow. Get out. For real? No. Wow. You, you know what it is. They know nobody can hit that sinker you used to throw. Uh, I, I couldn't even get to the home plate. <laughs> All right. Well, let me. Hey, wait a minute. I got to mention my book. I wrote a okay. book. Got to put that in the screen there. See that? When the street when lights came on. It's all about uh, growing up in New York City, all the fun things we used to do as kids, and all the crazy things we used to do as kids. Uh, you can find it on Amazon. Amazon, uh, like I said, it, 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 it was an Amazon bestseller for one whole day. So make sure you pick up my book on Amazon, and my my comedy special is on Amazon Prime. It's called uh, it's called Cause I Said So, and it's currently on Amazon Prime now. Well, good for you. God bless you, and keep those jokes coming, cause it's a tough road here on Earth. Man, you know what we. We need some humor back. We need to, we need to lighten up a little bit and bring humor back to back to the world. You got that right. That's right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Well, God bless. You. Down there. It's a, it was okay. a pleasure to meet you. You got it. Bye now. Bye. Right, take care. Okay. All of our Herkimer diamonds, whether they're in their natural form or calibrated form or jewelry or clusters or in the host rock. We're the source, so we sell a lot of product to a variety of people throughout the world.